Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to present you yet another benchmark comparison between Xeon E5 2667v4 and Core R3 12100. In the past, I have already compared these two CPUs using AMD RX 5700 XT graphics card and tested a few games. But this time, I have got this uh, very powerful AMD RX 7900 XT graphics card and I am going to test 20 different games. I have picked different games, so we have old games, we have new games, we have GPU demanding games and we have CPU demanding games. Regarding the graphics card, why did I decide to go with the 7900 XT instead of 4070 Ti? Regarding the 7900 XT, why did I pick this graphics card instead of RTX 4070 Ti? Well, this is pretty easy to explain. First of all, in Sweden, when I bought my graphics card, it was cheaper than the 4070 Ti. Then, under no circumstances, I'm going to pay NVIDIA 1000 plus euros for a graphics card that comes with just 12 gigabytes of a video memory. This is just a complete joke, and I believe that NVIDIA shall either slash the price for this graphics card, or it shall come with much more video memory on board. Another reason why I picked AMD 7900 XT is because I ran a community poll and most of you believe that I need to test with AMD graphics cards and not with NVIDIA graphics card. Maybe it is because we have a well-known problem with the CPU overhead when using NVIDIA graphics cards. On Hardware Unboxed you can find a few very detailed and very good videos demonstrating this problem. When high-end NVIDIA GPUs paired with a budget CPU provide worse performance than low-end or middle-end AMD graphics cards, and that's because NVIDIA drivers load CPU much harder and in the result overall system performance is just pathetic. And the last reason why I bought 7900 XT is because I received a few donations from my subscribers that explicitly specify that this donation is to help me purchase 7900 XT to run my benchmarks. So thank you for these donations, now I have the 7900 XT and here we have the first benchmark result. Before I go into the test results, I will quickly mention that I'm using my standard test bench, which means MSI Z690 motherboard with Core i3, Huanangi X99TF motherboard with my Xeon E5 CPU. Both systems were run in Windows 11, and in both cases I have enabled resizable bar. Yes, you can enable resizable bar on the Chinese X99 motherboards, but you need to modify BIOS for that. Finally, I'm only going to cover 7 out of 20 tested games, but by the end of the video, you will see all the results in my slides. Ok, let's get in started. This time I'm going with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Here I'm testing ultra graphical preset and using in-game benchmark. So please beware that the real multiplayer performance might be different. So with the Xeon E5 we are getting 98 and 140 FPS, while Core i3 12100 is rendering 128 and 182 FPS. It is well known that the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark is less CPU bound than their real multiplayer, still Core i3 is significantly ahead of the Xeon E5. In particular, the difference is about 30% between these two CPUs. The next game is Forza Horizon 4. Usually I cover F1 2021 results, but this time I decided to make a change. F1 I have also tested, but let's take a look at Forza Horizon 4 results. Here I also test ultra graphical presets and with the Xeon E5 we have 145-169 FPS. With Core i3 we are getting 183 and 219 FPS. So the Core i3 minimal FPS value is better than the Xeon E5's average value. I'm not sure how significant this result is, because even Xeon E5 is rendering at least 145 FPS, but still it was about 26-30% slower than the Core i3. The next tested game is Company of Heroes 3, and it is new for my benchmarking. Here I validate maximum graphical preset. With the Xeon E5 we have 71-188 FPS. With Core i3 the result is slightly better, 92-226 FPS. As you can see, this game has some severe problems with minimal FPS, because the gap between minimals and averages is more than 100 FPS. Nevertheless, Xeon E5 is about 20-30% slower than the Core i3. The next tested game or the next tested games are Assassin's Creed. I have tested Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a perfect example how a game itself can be a bottleneck, because no matter what hardware you throw into this game, if you use ultra high graphical preset, the performance is just horrible. So with the Xeon E5 and 7900 XT using ultra graphical preset, we get 49 and 81 FPS. Replacing the CPU with Core i3-12100 does not really improve the result. We get 53 and 86 FPS. So this is just pathetic with a such an expensive graphics card and with a such low resolution as 1080p. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, on the other hand, is a good example of a well-optimized game. Even though it has much better graphics than Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the performance is almost double as what we get with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So, here I also test Ultra Graphical Preset, and with the Xeon E5 we have 8952 FPS. With Core i3-12100 we have 106 and 163 FPS. Yes, it's unfortunate, but i3-12100 is still ahead of the Xeon, even though the game is able to utilize multiple CPU cores. Once again, we can see that even though the game can use multiple CPU cores, it still heavily relies on the single core performance. The next tested game is Rainbow Six Extraction, and this game is a perfect example when Core i3 is more than 20% faster than Xeon E5, but no one cares about this difference, because both of the CPUs deliver more than 200 FPS for minimum. Testing Ultra Graphical Preset with RX 7900 XT, we get 246 and 288 FPS with the Xeon E5. Core i3 has slightly better results, 257 and 350 FPS. Yes, on average i3 is about 22% faster, but who cares about this difference? And honestly, I don't think anyone would be able to distinguish 288 and 350 FPS. The pre-lost game I'm going to cover in this video is Watch Dogs Legion, and this game is very, very CPU demanding. Testing with very high graphical preset, Xeon E5 is only able to render 70 and 95 frames per second. But Core i3-12100 is even worse, we are getting only 66-90 FPS. So on average, Xeon E5 is about 5-6% faster than the Core i3. And finally, the last game I'm going to cover in this video is Borderlands 3. This game is also very CPU demanding, and testing with ultra graphical preset, with the Xeon E5 we are getting 118 and 151 FPS. But Core i3 is slower than that. Core i3 delivers only 97 and 145 FPS. So the gap between these two CPUs in Borderlands 3 is from 4 to 18%, depends on which metrics you compare with. So, if I combine all 20 tested games, on average with the Xeon E5 2667v4 at 1080p, RX 7900 XT is able to render 101 and 166 FPS. If I replace the CPU from E5 to Core i3-12100, then RX 7900 XT is able to render 115-189 FPS. All in all, the difference between these two CPUs is 14%, and the difference is the same when comparing minimals and averages. As usual, with these results, all of you will make your own conclusion. Some will say that Core i3-12100 is the obvious winner, and others will say that Xeon E5 2667v4 is a better value option, and thus you shall go with the Xeon. And I will say that both of you are correct. In my personal opinion, it's better to slightly overpay and get i3-12100, but I also see the reasoning that when you're building an ultra-budget gaming computer, Xeon E5 2667v4 might be a better option, because this little amount of money that you save on the X99 combo compared to LJ1700 combo, you can invest into buying a better graphics card, and overall your system will perform better in games. So, I leave the decision on you, but we also need to take into account the AMD AM4 platform. Right now we can see that Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 3 3300X prices on AliExpress are going down and down. Thus, I plan to test Ryzen 5 3600 with the same GPU and the same 20 games in the near future. But if you believe that there is another better CPU that I shall test with the 7900XT, then please leave me a comment and I will consider that. With that I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and helpful. Bye for now.